going on my mans, it's Mazbrex, and today I got something that is truly special. You've seen a single overhead valve, you've seen previously thought to be impossible dual overhead valve, and someone by the name of Diamond Motorsports um, made a dual overhead valve 404 piston vacuum engine that was chain operated. And I thought it's a bit of confusion because he thought it was the first one, and um, so technically he made the first overhead cam version but um that was after mine so technically i made the first general delivered valve but basically that's how it all is anyways me and my dad were working on a three cylinder four valve per cylinder that was on a smart car and that was co-worker smart car but anyways we're working on it and that kind of gave me some motivation to actually build something that no one has ever built and possibly you never will be able to build except that for my design and um that will be like almost impossible to build otherwise and almost impossible to even begin with is to build a four valve 404 piston vacuum engine to push it to the extreme so without further ado this is it right here all right so let's take a closer look at what's all including this thing so right off the bat you can see that there are four valves with like the uh tan tap it looking things I use like uh, bubble gears on there, but um, anyways, I use them, and then I use these 40, 24 tooth gear for timing gears, and I used a uh, special type of cam. Um, it's like a two stud crank cam, or crank I should say. It's like a lift arm basically, and then I use the uh, 1.5 stud like crank piece I guess off to the side as cam extenders. So the duration's longer and actually is needed on here, um, mandatory. And then I have this off to the side because or else this will hit that. And um, also it's a quick little duration on the exhaust because it doesn't need much. And the exhaust valve is really tight. Um, so the less amount it's being pushed down, the faster it goes. And then from there, because you see the two camshafts, um, you have the timing gear in there, um, timing chain. You got the intake manifold. It's extended outwards because there is a chain tensioner in there. And um, you turn this knob here, and that moves the linear actuator back and forth, um, which pushes on this outwards, which is pivoted on down below here. And then that moves this black gear here. Uh, it's more like a sprocket outwards to uh, tighten the chain or loosen the chain. So it is bottom dead center, should be right there. And then it is 90 degree offset, so perfect timing on it. Um, I can't really do much timing adjustment on here because it's, it has a bigger sprocket. If I were the smaller chain, then I can, but with a smaller chain, I don't have enough of those. And I have a big flywheel on the bottom here. So, that's how free it spins. Not super, but yeah. But anyways, and I have a three stud crank in here as well. So, yeah. Alright, so without further ado, let's run it. How fast it goes right here. That real fast was pretty cool. So to take this apart to show you the inside of the head here first you check out the chain of course and then this intake manifold just pops off because it's pinned on there like i said it's a brick and two stud or two plates tall and by two studs wide so it's uh kind of free-flowing i guess and the inside here 
just can't really tell. Uh, at least not yet, but there are two valves. You can kind of see a little bit. And then, of course, you got your tank tensioner here. So you kind of just rip that off. So this is up close. So it pivots down here in the bottom. This is a linear actuator. You move this outwards. And you can see it just very slowly moving. You just kind of rip this off, I guess. So I guess you can kind of hold on to this and then just yank it off. That. All right, so this exposes you to the bottom, the exciting part of the four valves. So as you can see, it is very close together. So we just shove some piece of paper down there, as you can see, um, for tire clearances, and the valves will move. So you have the glue, and then you just kind of. All right, so after taking that apart, then you kind of get a good idea of how this works. So you have this orange brick in the middle here, and that seals the insides of these valves here as you can see and then you have these one by two plates with like that special like end on it and that kind of extends out just like a half of a stud out and um that seals it right there now you might be wondering what seals in between here well that's kind of one of the downfalls of uh my design is that there is nothing there so the only thing that's actually sealing in there is just these two valves, the clearances in between there, which adds up and kind of gives it a gap there. And um, it's kind of one of the biggest reasons why it kind of leaks a lot, but um, it also kind of has to do with, like this is, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of spring pressure on the exhaust. And that's just enough to actually keep this valves from like going down. But even that, it goes down just a little bit, but... I don't think it really matters just too too much, but um, it is somewhat noticeable. Anyways, so you have that. So that's the intake there, as you can see much better now. You can see the valve stems on there. So you two of them there and there. Can't really see the bottom of the valves though. Anyways, um, and just to kind of turn it over, as you can see that. So you go. Up and down at the same time and they just lift up like that so so as you can see with the exhaust valve open there is nothing sealing in between there as you can see uh, I also see the two valves in there alright and they flip right side up as you can see I already took the uh, two camshafts off and they're about 180 degrees separation and then I took the tappets off there and the two top of the valve guides on there. And the valve guides, one of them, well, the bottom ones are on the bottom here, these two gray um, plates in there. That's the bottom guides. These are the top guides. And then this is the most pain in the ass. And as you can see in here, it is bad. It is very, 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 very tight in there. So these are two exhaust valves. And as you can see, those blocks in there is what um, is being pulled up by these valve, uh, what is it, valve springs. They're just rubber bands, basically. And they're both in the corner here, the corners here, and being held on by literally a half of a stud, which is like a little round piece in there. Which is very, very minimum and being very supportive by just that brick in there. And in order to keep this running, you have to have the valves on, like the valve springs pressure on here. Just like barely anything, as you can see in here. It's just, I'm sure if you just like hang this down, yeah, it's just like, you know, hanging down a little bit. Um, but there are still just like, you know that much travel before it bombs out but it is being held up just a little bit but it's just very little because you have two valves on here so you have to have run you have to push down two of them which is a lot more uh, pressure I guess than just running one so yet it takes a lot more power basically from the engine so you have to have a really low in order for it to actually run which is one of the biggest things reason why it never ran whenever I first built this thing so you keep that in mind if you ever going to want to build this 
and then you have the valve springs on the exhaust side very tight um, I would if you're running this just have it, the vacuum hooked up all the way on the intake and then just push down on the have this separate from the exhaust in there push down the intake all the way down and then see if the exhaust valves go down if they do and that means that your exhaust valve spring pressure is way too little so you have to increase it so you have to take this all back apart again push down those blocks which pushes down on the uh, valve springs and makes it tighter so then you have to do that and then you put it back together again do it again and it's very tedious work if you're the type of person who actually likes to do this you know tuning it just to get the most RPMs you can you know having fun with it then this is the engine for you however if you're impatient and uh, want immediate results and uh, don't want to do a whole lot of tuning this isn't exactly the engine for you and especially just the compactness just look at that it's just crazy anyways so uh, that's pretty much the whole head I mean you have the intake there exhaust there that's how you seal it that's the how you get the valve like the whole valve springs in there um, you get the valve guides tappets camshaft standard body of an engine you know yeah you that you don't even have to have the camshaft in the side and then whatever chain you want to run and then just the chain uh, well, chain, chain tensioner on there and then a big ass flywheel now one other tip I will give you is that whenever you're running any 4x4 overhead valve engines this is very key is that if it doesn't spin over at least two like one and a half to two times over at like a you know medium speed turning over then it is way too tight um, whatever you're running on there is probably not gonna work so you gotta fix that whatever you know lower the spring rate whatever so that's kind of a general rule of thumb all right so then we we'll wrap up for this video so uh thanks for watching please give it a like and consider subscribing because uh hoping to get at least 100 by the end of the year anyways um also the reason why that i was gone for so long is because i was looking uh I was working on a lot of random stuff um i got a paper shredder i guess i don't know and um a water pump and a secret transmission that you will be seeing in the next couple of months so um yeah see ya